Previously on the Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series. Ken, I grew up uh, in, in the garbage business, in the trash business, my whole life, done nothing else. Um, and I'm very confident, and uh, I like to talk trash. Well, you guys got some plan, don't you? Looking pretty slow out there, Steve. <laughs> That's the way he lives his life, he talks trash. That Saturday morning, we did one or two laps and then kaput, the engine died. And with it, all my hopes died. I says, all this work just went down the tubes. I'm gonna run over there right now and uh, give him the engine. We'll see how she works. It's fine, it was very generous of him and we appreciate it and we hope to show our appreciation by kicking his ass on the, on the race course. If you're not up front running, of course you're not on the edge. And if you're not on the edge, you're not going to win. So today is race day in Patrick, Long Island, but I'm still at home. <laughs> Somebody told some lady Irene to come visit us this weekend. 48 hours before the big race in Sayville, New York, an incoming threat, Hurricane Irene, forces the weekend of racing to be canceled. Well, the storm has really, uh, really socked it to us. It, um, my partner put a lot of work into this and so did the crew. We thought this was gonna go between uh, getting permits and everything, they got everything, and then the this, this storm came up the coast and it just put the kibosh on everything. I think there has to be a new word invented because uh, frustrating is uh, is not even close. No low pressure system coming, so we're getting hit, and we're gonna get hit hard with that Category Two hurricane. It upsets us. It's a lot of work. You, you bust your butt all season long, all winter, all summer, and then this just puts a, a stop to everything. We've had issues with uh, relocating and moving. We basically got everything put together. It's, it's very stressful because it, it's, it takes a lot out of you. And then it's a relief when it goes off well and everything happens well and then you're like, ah, oh, that was a great turnout. And we're working down to the wire with the Coast Guard and with the Suffolk County Fire Marshals, the Suffolk County Marine Police and the Land Police and the Federal guys and the parks. And we were putting everything together and we just saw the light at the end of the tunnel and we conquered all adversity, except we got something coming at us that uh, unless I could turn it to Zeus real quick, we ain't stopping this hurricane. It is what it is, you know. Coast Guard makes the decisions and they err on the side of caution. We race boats, we err on the side of not very much caution. <laughs> How is it to cancel a race? Um, it doesn't happen too often, but it does happen. It'll put extra pressure on the teams for the next race. The points will carry over. They're not gonna have this race here. As far as winning your national championship, it just puts more pressure when we go to Solomons. We're in Solomon Island, Maryland this weekend for the final race of the OPA National Series. After this, we'll go to Orange Beach, our final world championship race of the year. This is a beautiful venue. It's our second time here. Spectators are amazing. This is a real party town. Well, Solomon's Island is an excellent uh, location to have a race. Uh, it's, it's the western shore of the Chesapeake Bay. You know, it's got all that down home style uh, architecture. There's a marina and a boatyard everywhere you go. You just drive down a street and there's sailboats over there. There's sailboats, you know, on the hard, you know, over just in yards, just boats, boats, boats everywhere. It's a kind of a new site, and it's an adventure. These become adventures, each one, and, and um, I really enjoyed Solomon's, the town and the people and everything else, and, uh, um, and their enthusiasm. You know, all the people are very friendly, they welcome you with open arms. 
little rickety marinas, huge boatyards, just all kinds of stuff going on around here. I love that. You know, I love going to places where the people are really enthusiastic about what we do. And this is exactly the type of venue where we do our best. When we go to Miami, we kind of get lost. There's so much going on, you know? When we go to St. Clair, it's that small town environment. OPA Boat Racing comes to town. It's the biggest thing to ever hit that town. Same thing here. They've never seen boat racing like this here, and the people just come out from hundreds of miles around, and they want to come watch the OPA boats go to town. Next on the Amsoil Offshore Power Boat Racing Series. The folks of Solomon's Island take to the waters for their own competition. Plus, we follow one driver as he readies himself for his big race at Solomon's Island. The Amsoil Offshore Power Boat Racing Series is brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. The Amsoil Offshore Power Boat Racing Series is brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics, and by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Optima Batteries, the ultimate power source. Before Sunday's main event, another competition heats up out in the Chesapeake Bay. This is the Chesapeake Bay Powerboat Association poker run that is run in conjunction with the Solomon's Island Offshore Grand Prix. We come up here and run the race down in Solomon's Island for the OPA National Championships. And the day before, because there isn't a lot to do for all of our volunteers and for a lot of our spectator boats, we run a poker run. A poker run is basically four or five stops. We pick up cards at each of the stops. We come to the end stop, have a party, play the cards, and uh, just, a, just a good way to get a bunch of boats together for the day. I try to make all the runs so that they're relaxing and everybody can meet and, and um, mingle with each other. The pack will typically run Together, there will be a very fast pack, a fairly fast pack, and then a slower pack. But um, we don't do anything in our poker runs that have anything to do specifically with speed. A, a guy can come out here in a 19-foot boat and run 20 miles an hour and still win the poker hand at the end of the day. It isn't a race, however, obviously. There's a lot of huge power, a lot of very fast boats. Everybody wants to go out and run. It's an event where we can all get together and and be able to run our boats and, and have fun and enjoy it. And at the same time, um, you know, we're meeting new people and everything else. My wife always hates it because I can sit there and talk with my boat guy friends for hours and hours and hours about the same thing. This is the end stop. We're gonna have a party here. There's a band upstairs. We'll be playing our cards, having some food and, and just enjoying the rest of the day. The poker hand winnings are anywhere from $1,000 for first place to $1,500. It's like-minded people doing like-minded things with people that have passion about performance boating. Over in the dry pits of Solomon's Island, Team Was Up and owner Ed Smith gear up for another exciting weekend of racing trying to drag everything out of the mud here. A little stuck. Welcome to Solomon's Island, home of the mud bowl. <laughs> it's really a fantastic place. The people really go all out. Order a little extra drama here. I still got to get fuel in it and get it running, and you know how it goes. Right. Besides being a fierce competitor, Smith pulls double duties at each event as president of the OPA. Yeah, start for an Yeah, uh, Bob Owen's getting them in the back of my truck. He's getting them now? Yeah, now we have Ron and Bob as starters. I got a third guy already. And he's good? Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Solomon's Island. Glad to see a full house. This really makes my day. This is cool when we got standing room only in the house. Yep. Sweet. 
mean, this is for the final race for the national points, right? Yeah, this race here decides our national champions. The organization itself, in the beginning, was, was a lot, you know, um, to try and do that and then race at the same time. A lot of other places where I've raced, you see a lot of disqualifications, a lot of penalties, who cut who off, who did, we don't have that. Okay, you guys are real good at what you do. You respect each other, you race each other clean, and that, to us, is, is a godsend. You worry about every little detail. Where's the trophies? Where's the checkered flags? And, and there's all good people handling it, but I still double check everything that's going on. And at the same time, young son didn't show up, so it's between the two of us trying to get two boats in the water and race them. 17-year-old son of mine has been running this boat for two years, and uh, decided to play high school football this year. So he didn't make it down here, so I have the pleasure of jumping in this little thing and go beat myself half to death today. Boomer couldn't make it today at football yesterday, so I get to run the green machine. Thrilled to come and play with you guys. I'm really upset that he didn't make it, as you can tell. <laughs> Truly, um, I really just like to race. You know, the rest of it I can live without. Okay, the course is 4.6 miles. We will run a parade lap. Okay, so make sure you fuel for that. Hey, Eddie, can we go over that, that chicane again? We, we were, it was explained to us two different ways. I ran the course yesterday, a lot of you guys did. The tricky part's gonna be the chicane. We added that chicane to the center of the course um, just to make it a little bit more interesting. When you run down to the bridge, okay, it's a big wide sweeper, okay? And last year we would go around that big wide sweeper and just go flying up the river. Well, guess what? You missed turn three. Okay, when you come around the sweeper by the bridge, look back across the course, you're gonna see two yellow buoys sitting over where you would think would be maybe the start finish boat, okay? It's a shoot, you go right between the two yellow buoys, okay? They're there to give you a reference, you have to go between them. What's up, it's here, Mighty Jacks. Yep. The officials put a dog leg in the course, which is something new for this event. Uh, they call it a, ch a chicane. Yes, which causes all the boats to shift one direction and then shift back the other and basically go through two defining buoys. Cleveland Construction. Here. Sure. Dyke okay, man. Yeah. The race course is perfect. Uh, I like a, a lot of turns. It's challenging as a driver. If you do not run through buoys, you do not count a lap. Plain and simple. It's a great challenge. It makes uh, the course more interesting. I'm looking forward to, to racing here today and I believe it it distances the field. It, it really shows who is a good driver and who isn't. It hones your racing skills. Next on the Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series, Ed Smith and Team Was Up take to the waters of Solomon's Island. Plus, we introduce two more racing teams as they prepare to go head-to-head -head at over 100 miles an hour. The Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Race 1, Class 6. Eight boats idle out under the racetrack for their chance at podium glory. Yes, we're by pace 2 by the bridge. We're both yep. by the bridge. So here we are in beautiful Solomon Island, Maryland, about to get started. 50% chance of rain, but right now this, the air is calm. There's no rain coming down. We're looking for a good, fast race on some calm water down here. As the green flag flies, eight boats scream across the water with hopes of taking the lead. Locked-up Bandit takes the early lead, followed by Joker Powerboats and Maxed Out Motorsports in third. Was Up falls back in sixth. Was Up advances and moves into second. Bandit continues leading the race. Then, Was Up makes a move and passes Bandit for the lead. PFE Racing and Not Guilty pass Bandit for second and third. As 
Boisot continues leading up front. Four other boats battle for second. Stout grabs second, with Joe trailing in third. As Locked Up Bandit trails in last place, Waz Up continues to dominate the race. At the checkered flag, Waz Up takes the win. Followed by Maxed Out Motorsports in second, and Joker Powerboats in third. For Ed Smith of Team Waz Up, an early celebration begins out on the waters of Solomon's Island. Meanwhile, in the wet pits, Team Geico Caveman prepares for their upcoming race. My father can't really understand why I do it. He says to me, why do you do that? You know, I show him films and footage of when I've raced and he said, why do you do that? Are you mad? I started racing when I was 24, 25. You know, never looked back. I just love it. I just got a, it's a thing of me and noise. I think it's the only thing that I've ever found in my life that where I actually feel that I'm removed from a normality. It is something about it that once it gets into your blood, you can't get it out. Because when you're out there and you're going along, you're uh, on the edge. I, I just can't get it out of my system. I'm a fourth generation boat racer. A long time ago, my father raced Formula One boats uh, professionally for 23 years and was on the Mercury race team. And, and he is actually my crew chief at the moment for the, uh, on the Geico Caveman boat. We're just kind of generally going through general checks, but otherwise, no, we're very happy with the way it's running. Uh, prop selection's good. I realised at a young age, I was smart enough to realise that if I followed him around everywhere, I'd learn an awful lot. I loved it, it was a passion, it was inbred into me, and uh, now it's paying off in, in the offshore series that we're racing. I, I did the uh, P1 European series uh, in 2008, and Craig uh, was in a different boat uh, to me, and he became, well, in fact, he beat us, he became world champion. We ended up winning back-to-back -back world championships, and. Uh, it didn't go down well with Richard, he was uh, not happy about that. We were arch nemesis. We were very much, you know, adversaries. I was his kryptonite and when I heard that Richard was coming here, um, a good friend had put us together and we were, I had my doubts whether it would work to start with, but we've, we've meshed pretty good, we've not had one argument. I mean, we get on the boat really well now and, uh, you know, we race well together, we respect each other. I believe that's what you have to have, because uh, any arguments you get heated and then you're not concentrating on the goal you're supposed to, which is winning. It's a good team. Your minds are kind of thinking alike. To be frank with you, this is probably the best crew I've ever had. Geico's biggest competition this weekend is found in the dry pits in the form of Team Lightning Jacks. <laughs> right. Hey Gussie, you're on TV. <laughs> My name's John Woolley and I'm the throttleman on Lightning Jacks Racing. This is our, it's our, our hunkering down area, kind of our, where we muster up, get our plan for the, for the day ready, have our breakfast. Yum, oh my gosh, this looks good. Oh uh, yeah, gotta break bread together. I've been racing 20 years now. In 1996, I picked up um, the boat that I run, currently run in now. Um, you know, it's been that good a haul. Very competitive boat, you know, and um, it was my, one of my best investments. Down. Down. Good boy, good boy. Lightning Jacks is a pretty interesting team. They're a real colorful team, they're interesting, but on the race course, they are the ones to beat in their class. Josh is the driver of the boat, John uh, is the farmer. 
Ever, ever since I was a kid, I've always been into uh, high performance motors. I've always wanted to be on a race team. I started working with John 12 years ago. After me being with him for a month, he had asked me to crew chief his offshore team. I was very happy. I was ecstatic. Josh Wall, I guess, tries to intimidate people with that mohawk. The first time you see him, you go, who the hell is that? Oh, Joshua Wall is a great guy. He's run the gamut. Bar none, Joshua Wall builds the best race motors you can get your hands on. I build high performance motors. I also maintain regular pleasure coats. I enjoy doing it. I've been doing it for the past 10 years. Well, we're all a personality type. You know, the alpha male. You know, we all, we all have a drive to do what we do. There's no, rule, no, no book to buy. Or we learn it on our own. And obviously, the quicker the learner you are, the faster you'll go. There's nothing like coming up to that one wave, the adrenaline rush. It's wild. Next on the Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series, Class 1 invades the waters of Solomon's Island. Does Geico have what it takes to capture a win? Or does Lightning Jacks have other plans? We'll find out. The Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series is brought to you by Optima Batteries, the ultimate power source. Yeah, well, we've been testing at Solomon's today. We were very happy with the boat. It's the first time this season that we didn't have any issues testing. Oh, it should be good to go. Yeah, and you think that well to hold on the exhaust? You want my, you want my gut opinion? <laughs> <laughs> we're the, the odd ball out in our class. We're the only V-bottom running against two cats. In the flat, the cat has the advantage because it gets the transitional lift with the air going down the tunnel, which lifts the boat. So effectively, it's more like an aeroplane. A V-bottom cuts more. And of course, the faster you go, the more it comes out of the water. So you're riding on a very small V. So we try to keep between 115 and 116 miles per hour, which on water is very fast. Uh, the Geico Caveman boat. They really are a crew you have to keep an eye on. They have all the money, but it's not always about that. The advantage we have over them, we don't have so many hands in the pot. They have one guy that puts a prop on, they got another guy that puts a nut on, another guy that tightens their spark plugs. Okay, well that's that's three guys when one man can take care of all of it. You know, it gives you it gives you that little bit more of a boost. Well the guys in Lightning Jacks think they're really cool. I think there is a rivalry growing. You know, they put something on a website showing the the rear of their boat saying uh, Hey guys, this is what you're going to be seeing. I look out the side mirror and see that cat coming by. It's, it's starting to, to get on my nerves a little bit. We've uh, done all of our engine maintenance. All the lines have been, uh, have been checked for tightness. We don't have any loose lines, any cracked or frayed lines. You know, whatever lean we end up with, sometimes we get a, a pole position, sometimes we'll be on the outside lane. It doesn't really matter. You know, we, uh, we get what we get and we make the best of it. We're just gonna go out there and uh, you know, give those guys a good whooping. Race two, class one. Three boats prepare for battle. Geico Caveman, Cleveland Construction, and Lightning Jacks. The rivalry between Geico, Lightning Jacks, and Cleveland Construction will be settled here today at Solomon's Island. As the green flag flies, Cleveland Construction takes the early lead, followed by Geico in second and Lightning Jacks in third. Geico begins to make its move and takes the lead.
Cleveland Construction rides in second, while Lightning Jack sit third. begin to challenge Cleveland Construction for second. Lightning Jacks make a move and jump into second. Up front, Geico continues leading the race. Mechanical failures cause Geico to lose their lead. Lightning Jacks moves to the head of the pack. Cleveland Construction takes over second place. At the checkered flag, Lightning Jacks take the win. Followed by Cleveland Construction in second, and Geico in third. Another victory goes to Lightning Jacks. Next on the Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series, the most competitive class in the OPA takes the stage. Plus, in the Supercat Light class, Team Phoenix Parts attempts to defeat their longtime rival, Bob Teague of Amsoil, for a second time. The Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series is brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. The Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series is brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. And by GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Optima Batteries the ultimate power source. Before the Supercat lights and extreme class take to the waters of Solomon's Island, a smaller group of boats, class five, enter the track with hopes of victory. flag flies, seven boats race toward the first turn. Team Optima takes an early lead with Typhoon in second and Who's Your Daddy in third. Typhoon and Optima go neck and neck with Mighty Max and Who's Your Daddy trailing close behind. Your Daddy inches into first. Mighty Max moves into second. Team Saris challenges Mighty Max for second. Your Daddy continues leading the way. Team Saris rides comfortably in second. Mitigator and Mighty Max battle for third, with Typhoon and Optima battling for fifth.
mechanical issues caused Team Ceres to pull out of the race. Up front, Who's Your Daddy leads the pack. Mitigator lands in second and Mighty Max in third. At the checkered flag, Who's Your Daddy takes the win, followed by Mitigator in second and Mighty Max in third. For Team Who's Your Daddy, the race at Solomon's Island is the team's first win of the season. The Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Over in the dry pits, Amsoil driver Paul Witter readies himself for the last race of the day. A boat was my home for my first 10 years of life. I grew up on a sailboat and that was my home. and I didn't know any different, so it was awesome. I loved it. I've been racing for 23 years, so between Bob and myself, you know, we've got 60 years in race boats. It's pretty good. I'd raced my own boats for a long time, 15 years. So when the opportunity to race with Bob came up, I thought I can probably do that. I won't embarrass him as a driver. And we're, I think we make a pretty good team. He, 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 we, there's not a whole lot of communication in the boat. We, we just, we're in tune. There is nobody else at this point in time that goes out and consistently wins and wins and wins except Bob. So there's, there's nobody else to beat. I mean, we always beat him the first couple of laps, but then, you know, he winds up passing us because we run into these issues with steering and so forth. Last round, Team Amsoil's biggest rival, Phoenix Parts, blew an engine during practice. We're trying to disassemble Bob Teague of Amsoil loaned the team an engine in order to compete in St. Clair, Michigan. We have kind of a policy at Team Amsoil, and I have my entire racing life, that before the race starts, we're there to help all the teams, even if it's our competitor. And for the first time, Phoenix Parts took home the checkered flag against their formidable rival. I want to I want to prove to, my, to myself, most importantly, that we beat them on skill, as, as well as maybe some other factors, and, and it wasn't just a stroke of luck. I mean, he would love to believe that it was just a stroke of luck, but you know, I'm here to prove that it's not. Race four, Supercat Light. Two boats line up for a chance at victory. Team Amsoil and Team PhoenixParts.com. As the green flag flies, Amsoil and Phoenix Parts battle for the lead. Phoenix Parts inches up front. They round turn one. Phoenix Parts gets pinched in the turn by the faster class of boats and runs through a rooster tail before having to make an elusive maneuver to avoid hitting Miss Geico, making them lose ground and the lead. dominating the race with a hungry Phoenix Parts in second.
ground, I'm a leader. Suddenly, Phoenix Parts loses control and flips the boat on the racetrack. Immediately, the OPA safety operations rushes to the rescue. In seconds, the divers respond to the crash. Moments later, the crew of Phoenix Parts exits the boat without injury. Additional safety flares are ignited to alert other boats competing on the course. We saw how hard Amsoil and uh, Phoenix Parts were racing against each other. Those guys were really out for it. Apparently, Phoenix Parts got a little tight on the corner, hooked the sponsor around the buoy, and uh, we see what happened here. All we care is that the guys that were on board are okay. That's the main thing. We'll deal with the carnage of the boat afterwards. You might want to put a longer rope on that. We're going to work with these guys for a little while, try to get it flipped over, bring it back to the crane. Meanwhile, on the race course, Team Amsoil races toward the checkered flag and another win. The Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series is brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. The Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series is brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. And by GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Optima Batteries the ultimate power source. In the last race of the day, Team Phoenix Parts crashed their boat while racing against Team Amsoil. For Director of Race Operations, Ron Pauley, the next challenge is flipping the boat back over without further damage. All we care is that the guys that were on board are okay. That's the main thing. We're gonna work with these guys for a little while, try to get it flipped over, bring it back to the crane, put some dewatering pumps in it, lift it out of the water. I'll tell you what, I think it'll flip back over, but I don't know if I'd want to do it in 54 feet of water. Well, why? What does the depth have to do with it? You don't want the engines to touch the bottom. The more depth, the better. But if you guys can get it flipped and maybe start it moving towards the crane, um, then we'll try and get a, a dewatering pump out there. Number three is doing that now. It looks like they're rearranging the rope to pull it from the other direction and try to flip it over. All right, good, this guy's got it. That's, where that's teamwork. Yeah, don't be in a rush. Don't be in a rush. Come on, sweetheart. There you go. Now pull it tight, sweetheart. Pull it, pull it, pull it. He's got to come. He's got to come straight along the side of it. Just keep the lines out of the propellers. Pull, 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 pull! There you go. That's the ticket. As the racing in Solomon's Island comes to an end, 
the teams prepare to celebrate their victories. Yeah, well, we were leading the race uh, and we were gaining nine seconds a lap. We would have lapped uh, the other boats. Uh, we were doing so well. And then we unfortunately had a trim ram uh, fail, a hydraulic hose fail. What that created was a situation where effectively we've got one propeller lower in the water than the other. We went into that bend where the other boat turned over and we spun out. Uh, we were very lucky we didn't turn the boat over, which was unfortunate, but that's racing. And uh, it wasn't very pleasant spinning out, but you know, that it's racing too. We had, we had a great race. I, lo I love this town, I love this course. Uh, with the dog leg, it made it very exciting because we were swapping back and forth. The Cleveland construction boat and uh, the caveman Geico boat both got a little bit of a lead on us. We were going into the turns at 114, coming out of the turns at 95, 100 miles an hour. There was one, one particular turn, turn, turn five, where we got past Geico. In that, in that little bit of time, maybe two seconds, we were able to get by them. This is actually my 100th win here in Solomon's Island. So what better place could it be than right here? It's awesome. We would go through the turn and we'd come out of the turn and I look in my left mirror as we're coming out and I kind of give myself a mental second count to find out how many seconds they are. Every lap. Every turn we got a little bit closer, a little bit closer, a little bit closer and we needed that edge to then pass them. Let it set level. Hey, make sure you watch We knew whatever we were doing, if we just keep doing that and don't make a mistake ourselves, one little mistake, they'd be all over us. And that's why we decided to take this turn a little bit harder, a little bit faster, and uh, it came back and bit us in the ass. Trying to catch Bob, and uh, it, we had it bit real nice, and then just the boat just came unglued from the water and just uh, the back end come around. It's like we were 90% through the turn before it happened. It could have been a lot worse. Uh, I said to Harry, um, I'm just happy we were both okay. I don't care about the boat. Thank <laughs> you.